Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and you're watching The Best JS. Um, a couple of years ago, I went to uh, Busan, South Korea, in order to teach English, save a little, bum, little bit of money, and you know, kind of figure out you know, what I wanted to do next. Um, I started a local chapter of Free Code Camp there, uh, Free Code Camp Busan. It's like really cool. It's like a it's such a like thriving community of like expats and like Korean people who just want to learn web development together. And uh, I'm really proud, like I miss those guys so much. They were my best friends in Korea. But I'm just really proud to you know, watch them from from the States, uh, watch them through their, you know, uh, you know free code camp, uh, Facebook account, uh, people posting questions and pictures of the meetup. It's, it's like super cool. And I, I just read an interesting question from from a camper. I think he's a new camper. And he wanted to know about the map function. He, he learned about it because he needed it for one of the free code camp challenges um, but he wanted to know like where the arguments uh, of the anonymous function uh, that goes inside the map method he wanted to know like where those arguments came from like did they just come out of thin air or like what happened uh, so anyway uh, that's going to be the uh, purpose of this video. We're going to talk about like the map method. Uh, I'll show you an example of that if you have no idea what it is. And then I'm going to break it down to you. And we're going to talk about like some big concepts, but I will try my best to make it as, um, as entertaining and as like helpful as possible and like practical too. So anyway, let's jump right into it. Um, I have my REPL uh, right here. Uh, I'm going to open up a new session, just in a new tab. REPL.IT is a fantastic website. You can uh, have like a basically a, a, a very minimal kind of code editor, and you can write different scripts in there. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, the JavaScript shell, and let me just make this really big. Okay, it's nice and big so that everybody can see. And don't worry, I'm going to share the uh, the link to this uh, in the comments. Uh, so, you, you know, like you can just relax and like watch me um, uh, demonstrate like what we're doing. But here's an example of the map method. The map method, uh, we use them on arrays. And like all arrays have access to the so-called map method. And what it does is it, it creates a brand new array, like a, a copy of, of an array, and it uh, you can do whatever you want to each element of the original array, and you're mapping uh, like over each element. So that's why it's called the map method. So to give a, an example of that, let's have uh, an array, we'll just call it array, all right, or we'll call it numbers, so var numbers, and I'm going to make it an array of some integers just to keep it simple. How about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Very exciting stuff, right? All right. And uh, what we will do is we will um, store this new array in a variable. Let's call it var doubled numbers. Okay, so double, that means times two. And we will call the array, this array right here, one through nine, with the map method. And the map method takes an anonymous function as its argument. So we need to write a function. So a function, and remember your curly braces, remember that semicolon. All right, I'm gonna drag this over here. Now inside of this function, we have one required argument and two other optional arguments. Uh, the first argument is uh, the required one. It is the current item um, in the array. So the map function or the map method, it's sort of like a loop. It's going to loop through whatever array that you give it and it, it will have access to each of the items. So this is an array of numbers, so each item is like one number. So we can call it num or number. Let's just make it short, num. The two optional arguments 
are the index number. And remember, arrays, they have index numbers, but it starts with zero. So the index number here is zero. This is one, two, three, and so on. And that's an optional argument. You can get the index number of the current item that you're on. And the next optional argument is the array itself. So um, the array that you're kind of iterating through. And then inside of this anonymous function, you need a return statement and you, you tell it how you want to modify the item. So I want an array of doubled numbers, so I will return num times 2. And if we log that out, console.log, doubled numbers, Sure enough, you can see it right here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So this is a brand new array, uh, like a copy of this, but we have modified each of the elements. Now, going back to the Facebook group, our friend uh, in, uh, in Free Code Camp Busan, I think his name is James. Is that his name? I, I, I don't want to show it like his picture or his full name. I want to respect his privacy. I think his name was James. Anyway, James wanted to know like where these arguments came from. Like what what are they doing there? Um, so okay, let's show James like what is happening behind the scenes and where these arguments are coming from. And in order to do this, I am going to write my own version of the map method, and I'm going to call it the Steve map method. So without further ado, I'm just going to clear the screen a little bit so we can start at the top and start with a comment here, Steve's special map method. Okay, now I want my map method to be available to all arrays, and I can do that by adding this line, array.prototype. Um, let's see, Steve map. Okay, we'll just call it Steve map. And that's going to be equal to a function. And we'll get to this in just a moment. So have you ever thought about, like, why do arrays have access to methods like map and for each and reduce and filter? Why do strings have access to properties and methods like like link or splice and slice and all that good stuff? Well, these like data types, they all have what's called a prototype. And the prototype is like a template, a model that all arrays like follow. And the template, this prototype, it has all of these properties and methods that uh, that are immediately accessible by, by, you know, all the different data types. So it doesn't matter, like, what array you create, it, it will always have access to map, filter, or each, you name it. And you don't have to do anything special. It's just, like, there automatically, magically. So that's what I'm doing right here. I am actually modifying the JavaScript language with this line of code. I am telling it, hey, add this special Steve map function to the array prototype, and all arrays in this shell will have access to my new function. So, like, I'm really excited about that, and so should you. Okay, so um, inside of my anonymous function, there is going to be one argument, and that will be the callback. Um, although it's not really a callback, uh, a callback is, uh, that's more like uh, for asynchronous, you know, programming. Maybe that's not the best um, one, but um, maybe we can call it short for like function, like, you know, okay, we'll, we'll call it that, func. Now, keep in mind, the map method, okay, with, with nothing in there, it, it looks like this. So it has one argument, an anonymous function. Whoops, that's not right. <laughs> uh, what did I do there? Um, Control-Z, there we go, all right. Now, so th this anonymous function, that we have right here, it's like kind of like what this represents. Okay, so our Steve map 
uh, function, it will expect one argument, which is another function, an anonymous function, but not a callback function. That's different. Okay, so in my map, I want it to resemble uh, like the same map method. We're just going to create the same thing. Uh, this time, um, let's see, we're going to we're going to have to do a couple of things. One, we will need to iterate through the array itself. And two, we're going to have to return a new copy of the array with uh, whatever is inside the anonymous function that we give it. So first, let's create um, like, like a result array that we will you know, push into. So var result. And let's just set it to an empty array. Now we are going to do a loop and, uh, and loop through the array. So uh, let's do a for loop. And um, uh, I'm going to use for var i, lowercase, var i equals 0. i is less than this dot length. And then i plus plus. Now wait a second. This, what is that? This, this. This is a very confusing keyword um, in JavaScript, but it actually just means the array that, that you are iterating on. So, so for example, if I call Steve Map on this numbers array, this refers to the numbers, the numbers right here. So um, this uh, is is referring to the array, um, and that's it. That that it, it's not too complicated in this per, you know particular situation. So so anyway, we need to uh, take that function. Okay, we need to take that function, and we're going to give that function um, some some special. Yeah, some special, um, we're going to give it some special something here. How about uh, some special arguments? Yes. So just like, <laughs> I got a brain fart right there for a second. So just like this anonymous function up here, okay, it has one required argument, uh, which is uh, the, the current item that you're iterating on. It has the index number and the array itself. So let's do exactly that in this function. So the first argument is the uh, item that we're on. So that would be this. And this is an array. So we're going to access it with bracket notation like that. Boom. That's the current item in the, uh, in the array that we give it. And then the second argument is the index. OK, so the index, it, we start with 0. And, uh, and we're going uh, so long as uh, the i is less than the length of the array. So i is actually corresponding to uh, the index numbers. So that's going to be the second argument. And then finally, the third argument is the array itself. Well, this, the, this keyword is the array. So that is our, uh, that is our third argument right there. And then, of course, we want to... Uh, we want to take uh, we want to take the result of this, and we want to return. Okay, we want to return this. Um, that's that's super important. Um, actually, no, we don't want to return that. Um, that is because that will break out of the loop. What we want to do is we want to put that in the result array. So result dot push, and I'm just going to put all of that right in parentheses. Okay, good. And then finally, we are going to return the result. Okay, now for the moment of truth, let's see if my code works. So what I've done, okay, I've used array.prototype to add a new function to the JavaScript language, a new array method. And that's just a, um, a function. And that function, the Steve map method, it takes a function <laughs> as an argument. And I initialize an empty array called result. And I loop through the array that Steve Map uh, receives. So in this case, uh, Steve Map, if we did numbers.stevemap, uh, we would be looping over the numbers array right here. Uh, 
So anyway, we push the result of this function, we push the result of this function into the result array, and then after we loop, we return that result. Okay, let's see if this works, okay? Um, I'm going to use the same uh, array up here, so numbers. So let's do numbers. Let's see, var tripled. We're going to triple the numbers. Var tripled numbers equals, all right, how would we do this? Numbers. And the new map method is called Steve Map. Steve Map. And we're going to give it a function. And I don't need, I don't need the index or the array arguments. Those are optional. Um, the only required argument is the first one, num. But we'll just put it in there as well. Okay, why not? And then we are going to write return. And then we are going to triple the number. So num times three. And then finally, we are going to log tripled numbers to the console. Okay, so when I run this script, we're going to see the doubled, um, we're going to see the doubled array, and then underneath it, the triple array, which comes from the Steve map. Okay, so there it is. And look at that. We have written our own method. We have added to the JavaScript language. And this doesn't really seem like a Steve map. It just seems like a regular map. I think the Steve map ought to do something, um, you know, really special. So I am going to um, add something a little extra to my code, and, uh, and it will truly be a Steve map. So I'm going to push one more thing to res the result, result.push, end of Steve map. <laughs> All right, so now if I run it again, look at that. That is a truly a special Steve map. It will always end the new array with in the Steve map. Okay, so James, um, I, I hope this was a helpful video. Free Code Camp Busan, I hope this was useful to you. The world, wherever you are, um, let me know where you're coming from in the comments below. And uh, thank you so much for, for watching this video. Um, one quick little endorsement. Uh, you see, I wanted to wait until the very end to tell you about this, but uh, I actually teach JavaScript online. I am a personal tech tutor. So if you're learning JavaScript or web development, whatever it is, I teach a lot of different topics right here. Come by and see what uh, what you could learn from me, and uh, and I would love to you know help you think about that transition uh, into web development as a professional career, not just a hobby. Okay, end of endorsement, end of advertising. You guys, thank you so much for uh, watching this video, and I'm looking forward to making many more of them. Goodbye. Boop.